I don't know what my hands are doing. I'm like directing traffic. For the background noise, it is a billion and a half degrees. I have the attic fan going, trying to suck out some of the hot air. I have an AC going in Jake's office. I have a fan going in my office. We're trying here. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to another crafting update. Who's up here? Is that Iron? Oh, is that Audrey? This is what I've been crafting in the month of July. I'm your human host, Gabby. You can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and on my hand eyed yarn at Plies and Hellhounds and PliesandHellhounds.com. We are a crafty puppy interrupted channel coming to you from Central Connecticut. I've got Audrey and Iron, our two corgis, up here with me. Um, <clears throat> I know, bud. Sadly, we did lose our cat, Jax, last week. We, um, but let's go. He had a mass on his jaw and couldn't eat anymore, so we had to sadly put him to sleep. But we're doing okay. He was 14. He had a great life. So yeah, it's just we're down it's down to the four of us now, so we got even teams, right, bud? I know it's hot up here. Go sit on Tay inside. Ooh, paint's not there to give me snacks. But yes, this is a crafting channel, and I'm here to talk about what I've been crafting in July. It's a lot of finished objects. It's not a lot of whips anymore, um, because I haven't touched anything except for like three projects in the month of July. So let's just, let's just dive in. Let's go. I'm not gonna put it on. I, I can't. It's too hot. I, first off, first off, I have finished the Great Gingham Pullover by Jesse May Designs. Look at her. I did this using my hand dyed yarn, Plies and Hellhounds, in the Yugen colorway and Deny This, which is the gray. Try not to hit the microphone. And I did this on my Marie Cutie base. I love it so much. The fit pre-block was immaculate. I'm so excited to wear this blocked in like 17 years when it's cold again. I'm so excited. I did the size two. Did I say that? I don't know. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This was such a potato chippy knit. I thought it was going to be forever and always, but because you're doing everything in pieces, it's just so like nice to pick up. I did alternate between the two Yugen skeins. I did not alternate the Deny This, only because the Yugen skeins were extremely different, but they were from very, very different dye lots. They were like one-off skeins that were left over from different shows and updates and stuff. So that, that was a little bit annoying, but totally worth it. Totally worth it. I love how this came out. This might this might be my indie sweater. I might wear this for Indie Entangled. It might be my Rhinebeck sweater. Haven't decided. Don't know what else I'm knitting this year so far. I just, I love it. I love it so much. I can't wait to, it's going to be debuting at Flock next week. So excited. We mailed the yarn off. It's in UPS's hands now, but oh boy, am I nervous. I will be happy when I know that it has landed at its destination. Yes, this will be debuting at Flock. I have to remember to make a QR code for it, but she's done. And I love her so much. I can't wait to wear her. So that is finished object number one. Finished object number two, I have not been able to show you because it was a secret colorway. I test knit the Seagrass Tank by Samantha Garrett Designs in my Flock colorway, my beloved ghost in me on the Eldritch base, which is a, um, right now, just Flock exclusive base. It is 50% Superwash BFL, 50% Corydale. Amanda of Geek Task and I are doing a pairing for our Flock Mega booth. We split a booth in half, so we have mucho space. And um, so I did a tank top in my colorway and then a little scarf in her colorway, and she's doing a shawl with both of them. So let me put these on and I will show you two finished objects in one go. Here she is, the seagrass. I adore this tank top. I 
love this. The fit is so good. I have it tucked in. Do a little, little flounce. It comes to about here. I have dog hair stuck in my lipstick. Honestly, it's probably just like a revenge cat hair in my fan because he stuck in the window. Love this. I love the fit. It's probably like zero to like half an inch positive ease. Um, I think I did the size two again. Pretty so sweaty. I'm so excited. I'm going to be wearing this on Saturday at Flock. So it will be my debut Flock outfit. I don't know what I'm wearing on the bottom yet. If it's this skirt or the yellow skirt or the black skirt or um, I got mushroom pants in from Hot Topic. I'm in my grief spending stage. So maybe some mushroom pants from Hot Topic. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But this is... Excuse me, but I need my hands. You can come over here. Do you have a tennis ball to show everybody? It ha it's been a while since we had a tennis ball. To go with this, I knit a very modified version of Le Bandana by Amy from La Bienna May. This is the Ares Tour self-striping. I'm obsessed. So I did Amy's pattern up until 33 stitches wide and then just kept... I just didn't add the increase yarn over. I just did the like regular yarn over section she does for the edging. I will tie this in a better manner. I don't know how to do a knot, but this is my plan. I love it so much. I really just wanted like a little not sock self striping thing. I always just do self striping with socks. Can I wrap this twice and just be like super chic French? I have to block it again, I think, because I did block it in a rush, so I didn't use any wires or pins or anything. It's a trying time. Uh, I love her. I love her so much. I'm so excited. So yes, same base, Superwash, BFL, Superwash, Corydale Fingering Weight. Um, this is Geektastic's flock colorway. This is my flock colorway. I'm so excited for our mega booth and our little Taylor Swift corner. <laughs> we a bunch of nerds. I love it. So yeah, these are my finished objects. I love them. I'm so excited. I'm going to change out of this before I get it too sweaty because I do have to be presentable in it next week. So one second, I will be back. I'm still just as sweaty, but now I'm not going to sweat off my samples. You know, there is a risk to having only your wardrobe as samples, but I don't have the space. That's fine. Whips. I'm going to talk spinning a little bit only because I did tour de fleece, tour de fleece, tour to tour de fleece. Technically, I have no spinning to show you why I spun for two days and then I promptly never did anything again. I have just been moving my wheel around the living room. I was hoping it would really just like buckle me down and go, but wrong. Absolutely wrong. So, um, didn't do that, but I am not getting a fiber at, well, I'm getting my own. I'm not getting an outside house fiber advent this year. So I would like to spin my own for this year and also try and spin the Akari yarn one because she inspired me to even try doing fiber advents. So I think that will be a nice December. I think it's going to be easier this December. It's not going to be as like, there's no first that uh, I will be going through this December. I think it might be a little bit calmer for me emotionally. So we'll we'll see i'm also trying to work on like not going absolutely crazy work wise and like giving myself a couple months of chill work schedules because this summer has been absolutely insane i'm hoping december can be a little bit chiller moving on to whips i have not been working on much of anything except for those three things i have cast off two three sock tubes oh no i do have a finished object i have to put a photo in here because I did some quilting and I never want to do it again. It's still not for me. I do a birthday box with a couple friends. So we'll put together a little box and it to one another for our birthdays. And this year we started doing themes. This year we did chaotic orange cat theme. So I made 
two cat square hanging quilt things for my friend Lindsay, Lindsay Fowler of Larks Burnett. She has two adorable little crunchy ear kit cats. So we made her a little quilt square. I made her quilt squares. Mom helped out a ton. I basically did them at her house and then just texted her every step of the way when I was doing everything here. So I will have photos of those up here. Quilting is still not for me. I do have a charm pack that I need to go through. By go through, I mean like use up. So I think I'm going to do something super simple and make like a machine cover and a serger cover because I do want to have those for my machines because there are times where they go a very long time without use. And then like, I'm, it's not, you know, I'll try it every so often, but I'm not a quilter. That gene did not get passed down to me from grandma. That, that is not, not in my blood. <laughs> it, it went to mom instead of me. So which is fine. My, the quilting grandma was my, my dad's mom. So she inherited all the quilting genes. Her, her and Adrian got all the quilting genes. I'm good. <laughs> so that's my final finished object. I do have, I think three sock tubes that are done, two of which I don't know where I put them, but they are also a gift. I have told the recipient about them because I just need to put heels in them. I just can't remember. I just had to pull yarn out for it. And I finished my thrashing, threshing, fourth wing sock from Amanda of Geektastic. I got this at Indian Tangled last year. I have finished one sock tube. We went to go see Deadpool and Wolverine on Wednesday. So I did start the second tube and this is pretty much going to be like my air in the airport knitting, tr car knitting, travel knitting kind of thing for Seattle next week. Maybe booth knitting because I will be in her booth and I don't I don't think I have anything else on the needles in my yarn that's not like the folklore cardigan. So super simple, vanilla socks, easy peasy. I did do a new cast on and I'm gonna do another new cast on. Uh, cast on-itis is hitting. I caked this up last October to make a beret and I don't know what came over me that I desperately needed a beret. I can't wear hats. I have to like claw clip a beanie on, but when the Olympics are in Paris, you cast on a little beanie. <laughs> I cast on the Biz Biz Beret by Sa Sari Nordland. I love her, she's so little. Here she is, just a little bean. I am doing this on Rexeria uh, in my Iron Tweed and Fig Lace. It is in my pumpkin pie bag that was from the collaboration I did with Joanna last fall. And yeah, I just, I just cast on a little beret. It does have um, a ton of increases. There are a couple sections where it's just stockinette. So I might get to that point and stop. That way I have something to knit on during flock. I don't know how much knitting I will actually get done. I do zero knitting during Indian Tangled and I am kind of mentally preparing to be like that at flock. So hopefully I won't have time to knit on them, but if I do, I will have a couple things vanilla set ready to go. Um, I'm doing the, it says a fingering weight and a sport weight. The fingering weight is fingering weight held double with lace. So I'm doing that one. I don't think I have a ginormous head or small head. I think I have a pretty average size head, but it just is shaped to pop hats off the back. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see if it stays on. It might just, you know, be like one of those chic things you have on your wall. Like, oh, I could wear this beret and be fancy and eat baguettes for all my meals, but I'll never tell if I do or not. Mystery, French mystery, completely the Olympics. Just been, it's all I've been watching ever, forever and always. So yeah, that is, <laughs> that's my knitting. That is uh, my knitting, my spinning. I have not done any more hexies, hexagons, hexi squares, if if you will. I haven't done any more hexagons. Oh, sorry, Audrey. I just needed to get all of the knitting done for flock. And now that that's done, I can breathe a little bit. I do really want to cast on like a hundred things. I want to cast on sweaters. I have like three sweaters on the needles. I really want to finish my farmhouse. Nope, my farm chores. I really want to finish my folklore cardigan. Elton cardigan, I would like done, but no rush. <laughs> 
You good? Yes. I do also, um, the sewing bug is kind of hit. So this is, which I haven't done in a long time, acquisitions and reading. I have been doing a lot of reading lately. Acquisitions. I mentioned before, I'm in my grief spending stage and we're embracing it. We're absolutely embracing it. Um, I did buy diamond paintings. I saw them on TikTok. I love the ASMR. So I bought myself like a, a Monet watercolor with a cat in the middle. I did buy that. I am having a lot of fun with that. It's very much like not so mindless that my mind can wander, but mindless enough that I don't have to think. Like the only thinking you have to do is like find shape, find number, find letter, but like, I think with knitting, like your mind can wander a little bit more. So that has been great. Um, and I also decided I needed to sew cropped button up shirts in Liberty fabric. Uh, this is a little bit Lindsay's fault and Volenbein's fault. Lindsay picked up this fabric to make a quilt with or like a quilt pillow. Look how cute this is. It's Liberty fabric. So Volenbein, Kristen, <laughs> revealed where she gets hers and now I have a supplier. So I picked up um, one and three quarters yards of this fabric and I really want to make, I will put photos in here, like a cropped button up shirt to wear over dresses and to wear with high-waisted pants and skirts and stuff, just like chef's kiss. That's what I want it to be. And I figure since I'm spending the money on Liberty Fabric, I might as well get some more for sh free shipping, saving money. So I also picked up um, a sea monster print. <laughs> I got a yard and a half of this because I suspect the pattern for the shirt calls for one yard, one and three quarters yards. If I crop it, I'm not gonna need that much. So this is my test to see if I can get it out of one and a half yards we'll see. And that didn't get me the free shipping. So I also picked up a floral on black. I only have a yard of this. Please don't look at my nails. I have to do them. My nail tech has been so busy. My nail tech is Jake. I got a yard of this. This is going to be like a tank top or a t-shirt or something. I don't have a pattern in mind. I think Helen's closet has like a boxy tank top style thing. I don't know if that's my style. I haven't decided yet. Maybe just like a button up cami situation. No clue. I have to look through my patterns. But yeah, I bought a lot of Liberty fabric. I don't think I bought anything else. Oh no, I did. I bought yarn. I forgot about that. I did um, immediately upon Nomadic Yards releasing this, I got a skein of good luck, babe on her yak sock. I love her yak sock so much. I got 100 grams, 100 grams to make, I don't know yet, Chapel Roan socks because I can't stop listening to her and we're gonna go see her in September and I'm so excited. I can't wait. See Hosier too, so excited. Oh God, I can't wait, I cannot wait. Yeah, so I've got my Chapel Roan socks. So when I go see Chapel Roan, I can knit socks and scream how to go. Anything I've ever wanted ever in my life. Reading. I have actually been doing a lot of reading lately. My goal is 60 books this year. I'm at 14. I'm happy with that. We're going along. It's not, I keep thinking the screw on the wall is a giant spider. It's gonna give me a heart attack. <laughs> I'm just going with it. I'm hoping I find like my IPB of 2024. I think I did just not as many books in the series since i last spoke i since i last did a book update i think i finished eldest which is the second book in the inheritance cycle yeah by christopher Pellini. i do plan on reading the rest of those books just after flock i'm not flying with five pound books as much as i want to i need the luggage space after that i listened to assistant to the villain i don't know if i spoke about this that was super cute it so cute never in my life have i read a more accurate hyperfixation than that book i listened to it while i was doing yard work delightful 
Um, I listened to that on Libby. The, again, very good. I don't know if I'm going to listen to the second book. I might. I'm not hopping back into it. I had fun. I thought it was going to be spicy. It was not. But it's also the first book, so and every book doesn't need to be spicy. Okay, and then I didn't read anything for a very long time until like mid-July. I re-upped Kindle Unlimited trying to get the Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which is what we're reading for our book club for Patreon, our Chaotic Cozy book club. Kindle Unlimited does not have that book. I was gifted it by a friend, so thank you for that. It was at my physical library, but I'm still... I have to go to the library to get it. And I literally just found where my town library is. They keep moving. <laughs> okay, off topic. I, I picked up this book in Kindle Unlimited. It came under the paranormal romance section, Ghost Walk by Cassandra Gannon. It was so stinking cute. This was a romance book with spice in it. Ghost Walk, a uh, forensic scientist for like the CSI situation is working a case and she has what she calls a psychotic break and has to go on like a hiatus from her work because she thinks that her life was just too stressful. So she moves back to her like historic hometown in Virginia and gets a job doing ghost tours around the town, which is like permanently stuck in like the 1700s. Like it's like um, Alexandra, Alexandria, Virginia, like gimmicky historic like all the people who work in the town wear the costumes kind of thing so she starts giving ghost tours and on one of the ghost tours this guy keeps heckling her it turns out that guy is a ghost from 1776 so it's this whole like they need to figure out um he was hanged for the murders of three women but he says he doesn't do it so they're trying to solve this 300 year old mystery it's got time travel, it's romantic, it's so cute. I had such a good time reading it. It was so much fun. So I went back to the other books that she read and she has a kind of fairy tale series. The first one is Wicked Ugly Bad. It is, it's following one of the ugly stepsisters from Cinderella who is in the Wicked Ugly Bad, like insane asylum where all the bad like capital b bad guys are sent to for prison or rehabilitation and like she's in a therapy group with like the big bad wolf and a troll and the wicked witch of the west and like it's so good and like all the kingdoms are split up so like there's prince charming and cinderella who's like kind of a bitch but it is so good so like it's the it's a um little red riding hood retelling whole series so i read that and then the second book was beast in shining armor and that is a beauty and the beast retelling where the beast is um part of like the tuesday therapy group so he is in that whole group and um he was usurped by bell in his kingdom so now he's back for revenge and like they have to go on a a valor expedition to prove who's the rightful ruler of his kingdom it is so cute. I, did I read the third one? What's the next one? Oh, the Kingpin of Camelot. So that's a Midas retelling slash King Arthur of Camelot. So like Guinevere and her daughter have to go to Midas for help because Arthur's dead and the Scarecrow is trying to take over her kingdom. It all oh, delightful. Just like so cute. It was very much like she thinks he's just like a really bad businessman, but he's trying really hard not to show her how evil he is. So she's like, oh, bless your heart. You can't, you can't negotiate these things. Let me help you. And everyone's like, um, she knows that you're like the main bad guy, right? It's, oh my God, it was so cute. It was so cute. I think the next one is best night ever. I don't know who that one's about. Continuing the series. I am working on the book club book right now, but I will be downloading all of the novella, like all of the kind of fairy tales for the flight for Seattle. So yeah, it's, oh, it's just been so nice. It's just like, it's so fun. It's not like, I don't know. I don't know how to be like, this is a really good book. And then people be like, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like it's kind of modern, but like, it's very much like slang thrown in like it's not Nobel Peace Prize written, but it is so much like it is just so much fun. I'm having so much fun reading these. They are delightful.
a hundred out of ten. Love them. I love them so much. So yeah, that is what I've been reading. Uh, I did also find out that the Never After series has another book. I think it's a Hunchback of Notre Dame retelling. I saw that at Target today, so I will be downloading that as well. That might be next. Yeah, the reading, the reading is coming back. I think it's because I watched everything on YouTube. I'm just, I'm out of YouTube. So yeah, that is um, where we're at. Life-wise, we're just getting ready for vlog. Can't wait. I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm going to do like a vlog or anything. I might do one for the Patreon for like setting up flock and stuff, but I don't think I'm going to vlog the vacation. This is our first vacation, like post the trauma of the last year and post buying a house. So like, I just really want to enjoy it with Jake. Yeah, you're going to go on vacation to mom's house. Yeah. I'm so excited. Can't wait. Little tippy tappies. So yeah, that's all I have for you this week. Next week should it be the, should be a project based video. And um, after that, we're in the wild west of the internets. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to support us here, feel free to subscribe. We try to put out three videos a month. If you want to support us more, you can join our Patreon where you get weekly chats, behind the scenes, early access to clubs, all that fun stuff, a book club over on patreon.com slash plies and hellhounds and uh i will see you guys in the next one goodbye